Okay, let's uh, bring this meeting to the joint town council and school board meeting together, please. Would you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just to let everyone know, Tom Koenig from the Town Council will not be here this evening. And two of our members should be here any minute, hopefully. Okay, uh, comments from the press or public at this time. As the crowd comes up, seeing none. Okay, items of discussion, polling location discussion. As we all know, uh, the town council is responsible for the elections within this town. And we also know that we had a very great difficulty during this last election with having one polling place. Since that time, we had asked the various departments within the town, the police department, the town clerk, to be able to gather information and have data to look at so that we could examine and come to uh, some suggestions as to avoiding that problem in the future. So in light of that, we had um, also taken that data and sent it to the school board because we had some ideas of what we would like to request. Last Friday on June 10th, the town council had a retreat, and at that time we had a discussion about the polling place. We reviewed all the data, and we came to the following decision. And the decision is we would like to request the school board to consider us allowing us to use JMU's, which is J. Master Cola Upper Elementary School, and the middle school as polling places. We would also use, and we've received permission from St. John Newman to also those use them as a polling place. So that would be three polling places. And I'm, get, I'm seeing a, you can tell me the second thing. I see a mouth moving, but I don't interpret it. Um, so that's our request. Um, I know that there are going to be no decisions made today, but we also want to be able to provide this as an opportunity for you to ask questions of us, are asking you what kind of resources you need in order for that request to be successful. And we also have Diane Tripp at the town clerk and Lynn Christensen, the town moderator here, to be able to also answer questions. Part of the data that has been recently distributed is um, a historical perspective of the votes from year 2000 to 2016, which reflects the uh, various elections, presidential primaries, town elections, state primaries, and general, what the actual numbers were in terms of those who voted, and also, which is a nice touch, the percentage of each one. So I appreciate, and Diane, you had provided, and Lynn had provided, so thank you for providing that information because it's important. So with that, I'm going to pass over to Shannon because my that was a short and sweet statement from my end, but it's your, it's your, your time now. So uh, thank you, Nancy, for reaching out and inviting us to the table for a joint meeting. Um, upon your request, the first thing I did uh, was I, I talked to our administration and uh, about your, specifically your interest in the Merrimack Middle School. Uh, when it comes to the Master Cola Upper Elementary School, we have such a historical experience there. Um, we have refined it. It's, it's a well-oiled machine. Uh, the district knows what to expect. And, um, and we are, we're fairly ready to, to uh, take on that responsibility. The one that was unknown to us was Merrimack Middle School, and we needed a little time, which uh, this, this timing of our meeting allowed us to have, to meet with our uh, middle school uh, leadership um, and some leadership from uh, the town departments, the uh, police chief, fire chief, and superintendent's office all got together and talked about um, what that would entail. And I'm actually going to pass the buck myself because I'm 
definitely taking your lead on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to give the mic over to uh, Superintendent Chaffrey and Assistant Superintendent of Business, uh, Chevenel, to go over um, the meeting details and, and what that would uh, involve for using the middle school. Thank you. Um, I do want to emphasize the fact that there were nine of us so convened last Thursday the ninth, ninth um, before your work session, so it was almost like clairvoyance that we knew that you were hopeful about using the middle school. And to that end, we asked um, Chief Doyle to come because obviously traffic flow is a major consideration. And we asked moderator Christensen and Diane <coughs> Trippett and her assistant Brenda um, Principal Adam Carriger, Assistant Superintendent Matt Chevenel, Director of Maintenance Tom Tuso, um, and me. And we spent um, over an hour just looking at the site to determine all of the factors that need to be considered uh, for this place to be used. And we went in with a very open mind, and I think at the end of the session, I want to do the end first, at the end of the session we said, there isn't anything that we can't make work. And we almost need to go through and test it out and, and let it unfold because you can plan at the table. It was almost like doing a tabletop exercise. We equated it when we were getting ready to do active shooter training because we talked and we talked and we talked and we all played off of each other. And then we just needed to let it happen and off of that comes refinement. So I want to start with the end in mind, which is if that's a place that you would like to be, a site we think we can make it work. And with that, I say that there are considerations. We obviously need um, the police to be with us on that day. They're our most critical partners, not only for um, the traffic flow, but also within the building because we will be having school that day. And we, the, the all-purpose room is really the best site because, as you know, you can access that from a parking lot, and so you can keep it separate from the rest of the building. Um, it is a major site for lunch production because it has a kitchen, so it would mean that we would produce lunches there, and then we would deliver them um, to another part of the building. We already do that at the upper elementary school. So the upper elementary school really helps us because they've had um, a lot of experience. So um, Principal McGill will be very helpful to Principal Carriger um, in sharing that. Um, we talked about configuration of the room, and I'm sure that Lynn can talk more about that. She could vision with Diane how the room would be set up with all of the equipment that she um, needs. And I think um, the other thing, and I want Matt and the chief to weigh in, it really is about the way um, that traffic goes on that day and how parent pick up, pick up and drop off goes. Those are really major points because you've got a lot of competing interests going on uh, concurrently. Um, but we think with um, good direction, um, we'll be able to pull that off. It's at the very beginning of our school year because we start on September 6th, the Tuesday after Labor Day. Um, this will be on the 13th, so we will have been in school, like this is the sixth day, I think, that school will be going on. But we think, again, um, students will and parents will be very receptive to what we ask them to do because they'll understand that we're trying to make things convenient for all the townspeople. So we're very hopeful that they'll partner up with us too. So do you want to talk sure. about the looping? The looping. Um, one of the things that really makes the Master Cola Upper Elementary School advantageous over the years is the uh, ability to have auxiliary parking, meaning the Legion has been gracious enough to allow our staff to park there thus opening up the uh, the church parking lot for the voters to, to park in. Um, all the other schools do not have that luxury, but in looking at Master Cola, and the Master Cola, Merrimack Middle School, um, there is a spot, Bishop Field, which could be cleared out and maintained, um, especially, you know, if you wanted to go through this during the entire year, during the winter months that we could utilize for staff parking and keep them out of the main parking area where the school would be. 
so we would need to provide um, shuttle buses back and forth for our staff because that's uh, quite a quite a walk back and forth for for most people me included so that that's one of the advantages uh, of the site the uh, the availability the availability of having auxiliary parking and as the superintendent needed we would need uh, police presence especially to regulate outside traffic and then to secure the building <clears throat> from the inside for those who just wanted to use the facilities which are right outside of the the APR room it's kind of like master called upper elementary school where you have the bathrooms right there and we, there's usually a police officer stationed in that hallway to make sure they don't go past that checkpoint so it's kind of like a, a parallel kind of structure um, just the the parking and the shuttling of the the uh, staff would be a tad different but not extremely different um, other things would be we'd have to <clears throat> primarily and chief doyle can talk much more eloquently about this than i kind of reverse the the traffic patterns in the morning so we wouldn't have parent drop-offs crossing buses uh coming into the school and leaving the school so we'd uh, reverse that both in the morning and the afternoon so if the chief would like to go over that a tad that would be fine with me Yeah, th thank you. This is the morning drop off flow, the afternoon drop off flow. <laughs> Matt alluded to the change in the flow, if you will, of traffic. We thought it'd be more important to accommodate the traffic flow uh, as opposed to keeping it the same and trying to manipulate it as it were and the reason being is you notice as you pull into the middle school immediately turn to the right where the voter parking is going to be <coughs> that lot will be vacant because all of the faculty and staff will have parked and uh, been stationed down at Bishop Field and have been shuttled up to the school that's our main voter parking locations that first parking lot on the right what we wanted to do is push the traffic in one way have them exit out that same direction travel to the back of the school That's westerly immediate. in the back of the school around to the west end of the school and then back down and exit out the front of the school what we do there is we eliminate any crossover any crossover that would have occurred um, if we had left the traffic pattern the same what we did is we eliminated that crossover so we don't have to worry about parents dropping off and buses crossing over and the like so all traffic in the morning would follow one way in around the back of the school and one way out through the front of the school there would be no crossover and no uh, traffic going against the grain so to speak what we would be able to do though is because we have now talk about the number of officers that we're going to have at this location we'll be able to communicate at both ends of the school to allow each officer to know what available parking is still available either at the far end and the west end or even the farther west end up by the field there may be some availability and he can communicate with the officer that's going to be in the parking lot that main parking lot um, the buses will flow around to the back of the school and then make their drop off at the west end of the school if you recall the makeup of the building of the middle school there is an entrance at that far west end of the school and there is a queue I say a queue for lack of a better term there are a number of parking spaces there at the west end of the school that are going to be vacant the buses are going to pull in there drop off kids are going to enter the west end of the school and then the buses are going to leave and go back out exiting through the front of the school and then back out on a Madeline Bennett Drive parent drop offs going to run similarly they're just going to follow the same bus route in as well voters will be able to pull in and park there'll be an officer stationed at that location right at the main entrance to the uh, school um, APR slash calf and he will or she will be available to help vehicles stop or help people cross and stop vehicles that need to be stopped so that there'll be no uh, uh, incidents of any problematic issues there at that location uh, there's going to be an officer at that immediate turn on the right hand side as well as vehicles pull up to make that first right into the main voter parking and again there'll be an officer at the west end of the school as well to monitor the bus drop off and help buses move back out into the flow of traffic again there's not going to be in the morning there's not going to be any cross traffic issues at all 
there'll be none. The traffic's in one way, around the back of the school, past the west entrance, and then back around the front of the school and continue on out. And I think in the morning, we're in, Lynn and I had talked, and Diane and I had talked, in the morning we can probably expect, uh, at least in the general election, to be a considerable waiting line, even though tr uh, the polls are destined to open up at 7. There's gonna be, there are going to be people that are going to be waiting. Um, so we want to make sure that, uh, that the traffic is going in one way seamlessly, at least until which time that, uh, that queue of people is going to be cleared out. So we, we're going to have a plenty of officer presence there to make sure that folks are safe either in line or waiting in line to cross over that one little access, that driveway that uh, leads to the voter parking and to the, uh, the handicap parking out in the front. Mark, could you clarify your, uh, when you meant general election? Are you talking about November? Yeah, the November. Okay, and actually our calendar has November closed right now. Oh, okay, then we wouldn't have so an this issue is, with that. Perfect, that's even be better September. news. But this, this would be right. true for September. September primary as well, but he was talking It'll general election. It'll be the same election. for any election we do there. But we won't have parent drop off in November. That's but just any clarify. election that happens there, this okay. is what it's gonna be. Eileen? I, I think the, the uh, important thing to remember um, is that we're, we're, what we're talking about is three locations to be to exist at every election right. and it uh, really hasn't been established which one it would start at but right. um, so I think that they're planning for all contingencies for every election right. so you'd have three polling places instead of just the one right and that again just to refer to that first diagram that's your morning drop-off again all the traffic goes in one way comes out the, the same way Jody thank you I just want to make sure I understand because um, the middle school can be a challenge on a day where there is not an election getting people in and out so in the afternoon chief we're going to have two-way traffic for that going around yes okay around this around the um, school and so, I mean, there's plenty of room for a bus and a car to go side by side as long as people are behaving well and doing what they're supposed to be doing. So that shouldn't be an issue. Um, and then the only other thing that I would point out, which I'm sure you are all aware, and I'm sure the school district is all aware, is the front doors where people have a tendency to park um, and parents have a tendency to want to leave their car and run in or do whatever, that, that absolutely cannot happen um, because that will be a disaster which I'm, I'm sure you've all figured out but that's even when there's no election there that's what I have found as a parent there for several years um, is really what causes the bottleneck is people parking there both sides and running in and leaving their car and then no one can move so um, I, I, I think this is is viable and, and hopefully it will it will work thank you if I could mention one more thing before we leave parking in the in the afternoon I think we came to the consensus that we would keep the buses against the building and have any cars that would have to leave on the on the outside so we, there wouldn't be children crossing in front of cars to get Perfect. to the buses because right now they hug the guardrail on the outside Perfect. and as Lynn Christensen had stated <clears throat> if you're going to set this traffic pattern up for the September election I think it best to remain consistent throughout all the elections yeah. to condition people and to get them in the right frame of mind so it's after the you know the first election the second election third election and as the years go by if this proves to still be a, va a, a valuable site that everybody is conditioned is this is how the traffic goes so that's just my last that's statement good. thank you the one additional comment I'd like to make too is based upon the final decision uh, certainly the police will have their but we're gonna have to be able to notify the citizens of their polls and which poll they're designated to and it'll probably be completed by a postcard every citizen will receive a postcard and say this is going to be a polling place at the middle school we can make a special note saying if you can avoid these times if possible because of drop-off or pickup of students, that would be appreciated. It doesn't mean that they can't. But they will have been notified that those are the times where the traffic is going to be more difficult. So that would be of some assistance. I mean, that, that would be an additional resource. Just, just my best thinking as far as that goes right now. I think that 
before the election, I would probably want to set out some sort of notification to parents via email or Even by school that. messenger to communicate that information to them and to request that they, they minimize the drop-off, that if at all possible, please have your child uh, take the bus this morning um, because there can be upwards of 150 or something parent cars drop-offs in that area during the morning and we've all experienced what that looks like so if we could encourage them to take the transportation I think that would be a good thing yeah. thank so you between all of us we can at least encourage Andy yeah my only comment about parking is of all the schools that we've got the middle school parking lot is probably the most fragmented the parking areas because you've got the entrance on the end where the voting will be, which is sort of a squared off parking lot, but there's not a ton of spaces there. But in the pictures here, you've got people using the lot across the street from the entrance, which will have people sort of dodging traffic going from those, there's what, about 10 or 15 spots across. And then you've got the ones down by where the bus is gonna drop at the far end of the building. And then you've also got designated the ones up in the upper field by the, the Greater Woods trails and stuff. Um, as sort of where the voter, the, the workers would park and things, but people will find their way up there. So one of the concerns that I think I'll have from a school side is when you get inclement weather, rainy weather, whatever, depending on the time of the year, getting people all the way down could be a bit of a hike. Um, so it'll be, a, it's, it's different than all our other, you know, if you look historically where we voted, <coughs> St. James, John Newman, or, or um, the uh, upper elementary, even the high school, it is much more fragmented, so it's it's a possible negative to the site, but. Mr. Powell, Mr. Davis. Thanks, um, this looks fantastic, being able to see it on on paper to, to visualize <coughs> what um, what you're anticipating and what your plan is, I, I, feel, I feel comfortable with this. I echo Andy's um, concerns about the fragmented parking. A couple questions I have that I don't know if it came up during any of the walkthroughs um, with the superintendent. Um, was there any discussion of having a delayed opening on voting day to sort of minimize what Chief Doyle was talking about, the, the early morning rush when everybody's waiting in line to get there? No. Okay, so maybe that may be something to consider or let it run through after the first election, see how bad it really is and then have that in your back pocket. I think um, if it were I, I would like to run through it like normal mm -hmm. and see how it goes and then work on refinement after that um, because I think this is just gonna take a lot of people's cooperation and what we think is if we were to try this out on September 13th because it is the sixth day uh, of school beginning um, that with proper notification of parents that they should be willing and able to help us so success breeds success. If we could get that to work, then for the next one, you know, um, we've got an experience factor. But if possible, Davis, I would just like to run it full tilt and see how it goes and then play off of that. Because we really, we talked a lot about the beginning of it, even for where workers go, cafeteria people, custodian, and they all need to go to the rightful spots and we need to see how that goes. So perfect. I I think that's a great plan. Um, I'm just offering that up as maybe a contingency, if if it doesn't go as planned. Thank you. Um, the other question I had uh, was regarding after school activities, specifically sports. Um, not sure what is happening at that time of the year. We talked about that. The first one would be um, it would have less going on than normal, but if um, the governing bodies um, get the arrangement made if sooner than later is best for us because then we can talk to the Tri-County League and say that we would like to have an away game on a given day rather than a home game but we have to be able to do it with some advance notice because those schedules get set but we think that we can just partner up with somebody and get them to flip so that's we did talk about that Perfect. And then the last question, if I may, is I know when when uh, we offered the high school and made the high school available, we had to take care with the gymnasium floor. Is there anything, it, I don't think that we need to do anything with it being the APR, but 
I just want to make sure that, that all of our bases are covered. No, we don't. Um, if the thing that we are most concerned about is the gym floor because of the expense of maintaining that, but for the all-purpose room, we, we feel just fine just the way it is. Okay. And I did think of one last question. You were talking about it being an active kitchen, not only for the middle school, but Thornton's also, correct? Does it? Uh, it might be Reed's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Reed? Because oh. mm -hmm. they play to a satellite, right? Okay. So whichever satellite school, are they going to be able to provide the meals for the satellite school with this sort of a setup? Yeah, I spoke with Dave, Dave Zicky, and the plan, the plan would be that, uh, you know, he'd, he'd have to obviously have some assistance if needed to get the vans out to make the deliveries to the satellite school. And um, as far as lunch being served, it would be served or delivered to the classrooms. There's two doors in the back of the, the kitchen so they wouldn't have to go out into the voting area to push the food out. They can do it out the back and up the back hallway and then deliver it to the classrooms or team areas or wherever. I felt comfortable way. with the middle school itself. I just want to make sure the satellite location wasn't yeah. going to be affected by it. You can it. do it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That's all I have. Thank you. Shannon? Okay. Um, well, a couple things. First of all, I think if the Reeds kids saw their lunch coming by a police escort, it would be very impressive <laughs> to them. <laughs> but I um, just wanted to kind of play with the numbers a little bit. And uh, thank you so much for putting the percentages in here with the numbers because it gives us an idea. I think what you're talking about for Merrimack Middle School is to have a roughly, not legally binding answer, but 5,000 registered voters assigned to that facility um, of the total? I would say a few more than that. Okay. Like a few more than 5,000, like 10,000? No, no, no. I'm, I'm like thinking somewhere in the, in the six, six, six to thousand? seven range. Yeah. So if you look at the September primaries, for state primaries, it runs on an upward of 20 to a little over 20 percent saying that we have a high and unexpected 25% turnout, you're looking at maybe 1,500 right. total for the day for, for middle right. school. So, you know, I think we looked at uh, January. I just don't, knowing that we're spreading it out really does not have the impact um, of the number of voters going through. And again, our calendar has November as a day off from school. And so with 80% expected based on your numbers, um, I have, say, 4,500 coming through the middle school that day. It, it doesn't matter if you have everybody going through a super large site or smaller numbers going through three smaller sites. On the large elections, any site, regardless of its mm -hmm. size, is going to be busy. Of course. And, but I think the, uh, the point is, you know, when you look at a 12-hour voting cycle, mm -hmm. 4,000, and mm -hmm. not having teachers and students um, on a voting day. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that with that information being on camera, it'll be a little more um, comforting to those who might be mm -hmm. watching at home. So it wasn't really to uh, make any big statements, but I think that we're looking at manageable numbers for September with school open and with school closed, I think it's gonna be a little more palatable as well. So just kind of numbers to mm -hmm. consider as we're, as we're looking forward. Bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Superintendent Chiaffrey, the morning bus to the middle school, the buses that arrive there is between between seven and let's just say twenty past for a seven thirty start. Is that correct? Okay. And then in the afternoon, it's a two p.m. release, and you have a four p.m. late bus. Yeah. And it's just one late bus, or is it just one late bus? Okay. Thank you, Chief Doyle. Um, along that those lines of questioning, tactically, are, are you going to deploy a police officer at the southwest and the southeasterly side of the site? to accommodate the AM traffic for, for people that might want to use the overflow parking where buses are going to be dropping off kids. And then likewise on the PM side, I'm presuming because traffic's going to be going like this, buses when they're going to leave, they're going to have to stop traffic to get them into the flow of traffic this yeah. way. So I'm assuming you're going to do that. There's going to, there are actually going to be two at that particular location. There's going to be one right there at the entrance to the um, I say at the entrance to the actual APR slash CAF, but that individual will be in the parking lot. There's going to be one at the corner okay. where the buses come up and make the right, where the voters will come up in the morning and make that right. There's going to be an officer right there. There's also going to be an officer there at that location in the afternoon uh, for the purpose of having that not cross traffic, but it's going to be two-way traffic, and he's going to have to hold a few vehicles in queue to make sure that not everybody that's going to pick up, the parents, are going to be queued up in front of the school at the same time. But there's also going to be an officer at the far west end. I think you're referring to that southwest, southwest end. Southwest side, yeah. Yes. There'll be an officer there as well. 
and he or she will be there to monitor the traffic and allow that cross traffic not to get into each other's way, so to speak. There's plenty of room, we've looked at it, there's plenty of room to accommodate the free flow of traffic in both directions. But as you can imagine, buses are pretty long and they may yep. need to do a wide sweep and we want to make sure that the vehicles, if in either direction, are uh, stopped if in the event that a bus has to make a sweep either more narrowly or more wider to accommodate one of those corners. And, and lastly, just going back to the conversation we had a couple of months ago regarding this, um, um, based on what I'm looking at, is it fair to presume that parking's not going to be permitted on Madeline Bennett Drive? Uh, that's correct. Uh, okay. Madeline Bennett will be, and the beauty of Madeline Bennett too is we, as we talk about buses and parent drop off and pick up and that kind of thing, we know in the afternoon buses queue up on Madeline Bennett. Right. It's still wide enough to accommodate traffic to go past the buses. It's wide enough to accommodate emergency vehicles. God forbid we need to have an emergency vehicle response up there. So yes, there's going to be plenty of room for not only queued traffic, but for traffic to go in both directions. Okay, okay fair enough. Thank you, Madam Chair. Andy Schneider. That was a good segue, um, Bill, because um, to the chief, the question I actually had was on Madeline Bennett. Anybody that's been a parent at a middle school knows that when you have non-normal things happen there, parents use Madeline Bennett as the shortcut to do what they need to do and then to do a U-turn right in the middle of the road and things like that. So I think you answered the question that you're going to enforce no parking on that road during the day of the election, that to force everything through the pattern that you've built. That's correct. Okay, great. Thanks. They will, uh, I didn't talk too much about the officers and where they're going to be located, but there will be an officer at the intersection at a question and Bobusic Lake Road. There will be an officer in the parking lot and or a volunteer in the parking lot at Bishop Field. Um, and there will be an officer inside the venue in the voting at the APR and the CAF. And we're looking at right now anyways, uh, a total of eight officers on site during school hours. It'll be less uh, in the general election and after school sure. hours. Um, and just one additional question. Uh, we alluded to this a few times about how the fact that Bishop Field is the is the place where we could put staff at. Is there accommodation to do shuttling to the staff? Have we, has that been talked about? Okay. Because what ha also happens, anybody that's familiar with that area knows, that you're also going to have to talk with Rich Desmond to make sure that the buses don't use that in the mornings when they stage for the, between the runs. Because that's their favorite place. It's on his list. Okay, great. Thanks. Michael Thompson. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to make comment that uh, I feel comfortable with the information that's been provided. I feel that I appreciate everybody's thorough uh, review of all the information, so I appreciate that. And obviously with the superintendent and the administration giving the advice that this is a doable location, I, I feel that that's uh, adequate. I do have a question, though. Um, I think that this may have been an issue at St. James in the past. I think it might have been taken care of about ADA compliance. Is the middle school ADA compliance, and w where will we it be? We reviewed that, and we're, and we're fine. Okay. Thank you. Cindy? Um, yeah, just a couple things. I also am um, very comfortable with what I see, and I thank everybody for collaborating and getting together and doing so much work um, as a solution that's being worked out. Um, and I, there's a couple of things that I heard that I, I really appreciate. One is the increased police presence. It sounds like that you're prepared um, to err on the side of more versus less, particularly in these early elections. So um, thank you for that. And then I am also would agree the shuttle bus is something that we would need and certainly um, staff with big bags and stuff that they're carrying, not to mention the safety of having to, you know, walk up and down. I think there, there may be a sidewalk anyways. but. Um, but yeah, so definitely we would need that. Um, my last, actually the one question that I do have, which is about pedestrians that will enter the facility, is there anything that will be done to, because um, it's the, the middle school's a little misleading, because they'll be going in, it looks like a door, but it's not the main entrance, right? So will there be like... Um, there's, there's one door to the all-purpose room from that parking lot. We will be using that door only for entrance and for exit. Um, none of the doors into the um, corridors will be used except for uh, election workers that will be going to one of the bathrooms that's in one spot. But that's the only exit. And there will be police presence there to make sure that it is an election worker and that's as far as they're going. Um, I, I was thinking kind of along the lines of maybe like a sign, like an electronic sign that says like voting this way. So right when the 
the, the we have we have voting signs that we've used at all the, the locations that will be say voting okay because I know as the driver I'd want to come around and know exactly where I need to go yep. which would make me more attentive and careful driving it will be intuitively I, obvious especially the first time <laughs> intuitively that's the question Andy to most <laughs> <laughs> so this this is a question for Lynn so when we've talked in the past about voting sites you've been very concerned about separate entrance and exits and places for queuing to occur mm -hmm. and even at St. James when we used it there you'd go in one door and you would go out the back and loop around because you would sign if you if you were on the undecided list that's where you'd sign back up mm -hmm. what challenges do you see with the single door for queuing and things like that people are just gonna have to be polite there is no other alternative if you're not using any of the corridors in the school, which I don't believe is acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to come in. There will be the checklist. Any of the same-day registration will be pushed to the far end, much as we do in the upper elementary school, so that there's room to queue Cuance. in the line. If it's raining, you better bring your umbrella because if you're there at a busy time, you may be waiting in line, just like sometimes at the upper elementary school on busy elections. We've had people waiting outside, and you have no choice. That's fair, because I, I know it was a topic of discussion when we talked yep. about doing everything at, at upper elementary in the past and, no. and things like that. Because remember, we talked about putting a ramp in to you separate the entrance and well, to make a separate entrance, and, entrance and that just that really that yeah. really wasn't feasible. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Cindy. Um, I mean, this may be a question for Marge, uh, for the superintendent, um, and it's regarding band and chorus. Do they meet early, and do parents drop them off earlier, or is that something that maybe band and chorus wouldn't, or is that too early in the year for, let's say, the September? Yeah, we didn't talk about, we, we were solely focused on September 13th, even though we realized the messaging is the fact that you want to do repeats over a period of time but we were looking really at September 13th and so it's too early it's too early uh-huh um, but for the future that would be a consideration we would need to know how to handle that okay thank mm -hmm. you I apologize that's Cinda not right. Cindy okay any other questions yes Jody I just wanted to make a comment I wanted to thank everyone too and I want to thank everyone for being willing to come forward to I mean clearly we've got media here so it, this is important to people it's an issue that people are paying attention to and it we really did have a problem with this last election so I'm very appreciative of everybody working together there there is no good solution in Merrimack because everybody there's a lot of brain power in this room and everybody's been racking their brains trying to come up with something um, that is acceptable and you know and gets people in and out to vote but there's really no perfect good solution um, I'm happy to see because there's an awful lot of discussion about just having schools closed all the time and I know what an issue that would be for the school calendar I'm very well aware of that and knowing that there had to be some kind of a compromise so that the school district didn't have to have their calendar um, affected by all every single election that was really important to me but at the same time I think using the middle school is going to be a stretch I'm sure we're going to run into some glitches but um, and Andy's point about the fragmented parking is is a very good one but it is one of the only locations that has that auxiliary field so I think we need to try it hopefully it will run more smoothly than not but I think um, it's just a really good exercise for the school district and the town government to come together and try to find a solution for something that is just so important, having people be able to vote, having people not turned away because they couldn't stand waiting in traffic any longer. It's really, really important. So hopefully, I'm really crossing my fingers that this compromise, and it truly is a compromise for everyone here, um, hopefully it will be successful and I'm going to think positive thoughts. But I, I really appreciate all the work that everyone's put into this. Thank you. March. Um, I also want to make a comment because with every time you go through something, not only do you learn things, but there are also very positive benefits. And one of the things that our moderator offered up um, as she talked with Principal Carriker um, was about engaging the eighth grade 
um, and um, the voting possibilities because the students study American history and so um, she said that she would love to go in and speak with them about the process and that there might be some students who would be able to participate. I look at that as a benefit nice. that came about through conversation. Nice. Bell? Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't know who to direct the question to, but I want to go back to the middle school and the, and the, and the pedestrian pattern. I understand the reason why you want to go in and out one door because of the music room being in that particular corner, which would be prohibitive in terms of people being able to use that other door. How, lo how logistically possible would it be for... Are you talking about the middle school? Talking about the middle school. There is only one entrance from outside to that Right, and I'm talking about room. the side entrance over here. There's one entrance to that all-purpose room from I, outside. Only I, one. I understand that. Okay. I understand that but going out to the corridors and making a left and then exiting out onto the street. There are those sets of doors there. You've, you've got a you've music got, room that's right you've, there. You've got classrooms on that corridor. So there's only, my understanding, there's only one classroom. It's the music room. No, there's more than that. We were out in that corridor looking, and, and we didn't want anybody in that corridor. But there would be no opportunity for the administration to consider relocating classes for that particular day so that there would be a better pedestrian flow through the building from going in one side and walking out the other? I think that's asking more of the school than, than is reasonable, and I think we can accommodate the one entrance and exit. Okay, thank you. I think, however, Bill, again, the decision is not being made tonight. That certainly is something that can be reviewed. No, I understand that. I just wanted to, it was not a part of the conversation. I just wanted to add it to the right. conversation. Which will become part of the conversation now, and you never know. Maybe they'll do some double checking, maybe have a thought that might not have occurred prior to your question. We did talk Thank about you. that specific. You did? Okay. Yes, and eliminated it as a possibility. Okay. Mr. Powell. I, I concur with, uh, with Mr. Boyd. Just if you could take a second look at it. If I'm not mistaken, I think there's a set of crash doors at the bottom of the stairwell um, when you go straight ahead. I understand the music room's there, um, but that might be to your, to your point of having a circular flow coming in through the APR door and then just going out those crash doors on the end on the south um, on the south end of the building on the front of the building um, and then they can exit into the parking lot <coughs> I think at the time that we were talking we were um, trying to avoid any commingling of students in that particular area is the music room that's on the same side as the all-purpose room Correct. and directly across we have family and consumer science and tech ed so um, which there's a f isn't there a fire door or something there or not right at there. that corner the doors that you allude to are on the front but you would have to come out into the hallway and the way we look at the furniture in the room is to create um, a natural block and I'm not talking about blocking a door, but just to create a natural barrier uh, with some of the um, election equipment and so on, because what we're trying to do is to um, see how we can make it all happen with students still in the building, and we were just... I had forgotten about the second door for the family and consumer science. Right. The, I, I remembered the one on the main hallway. I forgot about the one that was across. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can clearly go back and look, but I think to give an impression that it is immediately doable might not be in everyone's best interest. We understand about the one in and out door. Uh, we stood and talked about that. And again, I think, if possible, I think we want to try and see it happen. I we just, just say, uh, we have a very high expectation of what everyone is able to do. We're going into this with positive presupposition, I believe. Yeah, we are. Andy. <clears throat> yeah, I, to me, hearing all the discussion and, and you guys have looked at almost every possibility um, issue that could come up. I'm sure there'll be more, but I think you can you've done reasonably what what you could do. I, I have no trouble supporting this um, from a school side for the September election. I have my doubts about the general election, even with the schools all closed with St. John's which I believe is you identify as your third site. I did not. You did not. I heard somebody I said that. I said that. Okay. Did. So there's some third site, St. John's, theoretically, the upper elementary school, and then the middle school. It will be interesting <coughs> to see the traffic, because I think this will be perhaps one of the largest elections we've seen. 
So I think everybody in this room needs to have really thick skin when that day comes. I think we all need to be. I've had alligator uh, skin for years. Well, I know, but, but <laughs> potentially even more, whatever. But, but I, I think that, to me, that'll be the real test to see how with the three, with all the schools closed, so you've got full reign to do whatever you want in those locations, how the flow is with that volume, so. Regardless, it won't be any worse than what we had. Oh, is that recorded? <laughs> now, I mean, realistically, and Dan, I know you want to speak in a minute. Realistically, I don't think anyone should perceive this as an easy solution and that there aren't going to be difficulties. <clears throat> there will be difficulties. This is a town that is going to have, especially in November, as you talked about, but even under normal circumstances, uh, traffic. There are going to be traffic issues no matter, even if it's St. John Newman. You're talking about 101, that intersection. At 5 o'clock, that's going to be a mess. But people have to take some responsibility as well. As long as they know, and we can encourage and try to educate as much as we can, those pivotal times where, for example, like the morning drop-off, where it would probably create a problem, then avoid those times if possible. So, Dan? More of a comment for people at home and, and asking themselves why the middle school, um, for our, our brain trust, it was really about geography of the town. It was important to separate the locations as kind of further away as possible. Part of the reason why we're all living now in a town where if you're driving through from Common Man Restaurant to the library, 4.30 or 5 to 7, it's a nightmare without elections. So it's a really long slog on DW Highway now and Route 3. At least the people who know and live here know the back way to get to the middle school, whether it's Turkey Hill or Continental Boulevard. So people at home, if you're wondering why the middle school, that was why. It was because we needed a location that was a, away from the high school, away from the church, and it was the biggest building that, that we have in town to, to accomplish that. So it was really an important reason. And when you think of the general election, it's say 15,000 people, the goal was to try to break it up five, five, and five. And so hopefully that will be accomplished. I think in September we won't be looking at those kinds of numbers, obviously. But uh, that was the reason why the middle school was chosen, just so people know how we got to that conclusion. Right. How it gets broken up is really up to these ladies. The town clerk will, and this is one of the reasons why I'd like to request the decision that you're going to make as soon as possible, because the town clerk needs two and a half months to be able to revise their checklist. And then on top of that, once that's determined and where people are going to be assigned, we have to be able to notify the citizens. So, And Nancy, just to let you know that we do have this agenda item on our agenda for Monday. So we will be delivering this um, this coming Monday the 20th. Perfect. Diane? I just have a correction. It would be the supervisors of the checklist who ah. have to make the changes. However, I do have a number of things that I do have to do as well. Okay. Okay. Excellent. When we originally went to multiples, we had control of the checklist in-house. It was our database. So we actually dumped it into an Excel spreadsheet, made the changes we needed to do with the fancy formulas that, that you can do in Excel, and backfilled it in, and we were all set. We no longer have that capability. The Secretary of State owns the database, and there is no method of doing that. It has to be done one by one by one by one. Every so the more so you time, need five months is what you're saying? No. no. We need a year and a half. <laughs> so the, the sooner, longer you can do it. I'm, go, I'm going to ask you, if you can't make a decision tonight with all of you here, that you make it as soon as you can because we're going to need every single right. day that we have in order to do that. Right. I think we had decided <clears throat> you're going to have the meeting on Monday. Uh, obviously, it's something that the school board has to have a majority of deliberation on. So for that reason, we were planning on Monday. So that we could just go over specific school district issues. So, I don't think we've ever had a vote at a joint meeting ever, because it's kind of our, our co data collecting for, uh, platform. So I'm just asking not to delay. No. Oh no, I, we're looking Monday. Understood. That's only Monday. Dan, so. you wanted to make another comment. Comment, but in my own fashion, not a bit of a joke, but serious. I want everybody to remember two two words: absentee ballot. And I'm going to be making a personal commitment myself as a counselor at every every meeting I can now until the election 
I'm going to probably go on, to, on the local TV show. And I'm going to stress absentee ballot to every citizen in town. There's no reason why we couldn't have an increase of 10 or 15 percent of absentee ballots in order to pull off a better election. Uh, many other cities and towns across America do a, uh, do a pretty good job at that as well. Maybe they're out in Arizona where everybody's a little older, but from what I can hear, absentee ballot could be a really big plus for us, especially for people if they're telling themselves that they can only vote between 7 and 7.30 or they can only vote between 5 and 7, and absentee ballot's going to be your best friend. So, But not yeah. necessarily ours. Sorry, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, um, Dan, we could have a conversation offside before you do your TV show. I just want to caution that there are very um, limited reasons why a person can get an absentee ballot and their ballot can be challenged and not counted. So before you do that, would you please meet with me? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. And I will also tell you that at the last presidential election, because we had a lot of people going through the polls, which we will again, we were still processing absentee ballots at 10 o'clock that night. Jody? I just want to reiterate, Dan, you know I love you, but you can't just pick an absentee ballot because you don't want to not stain traffic. There are, as Diane said, there are very specific reasons, legal re reasons why you might qualify for an absentee ballot because you don't want to sit in traffic is not one of them. So I encourage anyone who seriously is considering an absentee ballot to make sure you understand what the um, qualifications are before you decide to choose that, to vote that way because it would be very sad for your vote to be disqualified because you didn't qualify for that. So and, thank you. And your you. vote could be challenged that day. And if it's challenged, you could be denied that vote. And you might not know about it at the time, and so you don't get to vote. So please be cautious and judicious in who's, rec who's requesting. Let me ask you a question. Let's say I know I can't make it legitimately. Can't make it in the morning, and I work until 6.30. And the odds are I'm not going to be able to make it. Is that a That's, that's legitimate. That qualifies. That's legitimate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jackie. Yeah, I just wanted to add another voice to I sometimes a ballot inspector and uh, especially the last election, but I've seen it before. There are so many absentee ballots that it's very hard to we have to check them off on the checklist just like a, an ordinary vote too. Just a that's why color. I said we were still processing exactly. at ten o'clock at night. I know very well that you work yeah. and uh, and it was holding people up too that had come on uh, come on foot. That wouldn't normally be the case, perhaps. But, we, uh, we never do that. If you're there in line, you take precedence over trying to it, process absentees. Well, yeah, I don't want to contradict anybody, but people were waiting at times because we were in the middle of checking checking the absentees <laughs> off. Yeah, um, no big deal, but that is the case. So I just wanted to point out that it isn't as simple as all that. Andy? Yeah, so, so when Dan was talking, he, he said he wanted to give people the backstory at home about how we got to the middle school. There's probably people at home wondering why we're not considering a Reeds Ferry school. And one of the reasons that we're not is because there's no entrance available to the building while school's in session to allow this sort of scenario to occur like the middle school does. Because I know we at the board had that discussion. So Reeds Ferry has sort of been, to have school in session, you can't use Reeds Ferry as a polling place simply because of the way the building is built and access and things. So if people are saying, Reeds Ferry is closer to the north, why don't you use Reeds Ferry? There are specific reasons that we can't. So I just wanted to make sure people are aware of that as well. And Andy, you, you mentioned parking at the middle school being a challenge. Um, parking at either of the ferry schools is a bigger challenge mm -hmm. than in the middle school because at least at the middle school, you have a flow through. You come in right. one, if there isn't parking there, you continue to the next lot, to the next lot, and then you exit. Yep. If you look at either of the ferry schools, um, it, and I was at Thornton's Ferry last weekend doing parking and traffic control at Thornton's Ferry for the triathlon. There are one, two, really four separate lots that there is not flow through between right. those. Right. So right. Right. the parking, I think, mm -hmm. is worse at the ferry schools right. than it is at the middle no, schools. No, absolutely. And there's a back door at Reed's we could use. I think the Baptist Church on the road has a back way we could use, but you're right. It, even if that was there, it's still the back. The issue, That's of, correct. 
having school and voting at the yeah. same time. So that's why it's sort of the, been off our radar. The ability to screen. isolate the voters from the students, I think, is the biggest Absolutely. reason for using the middle school. Absolutely, I agree. Just like the upper elementary. Bill, thank you, Madam Chair. Just to echo and amplify, Clerk Trippett. RSA 657-7, to satisfy the requirements for an absentee ballot, you need to be absent from the town or city where you are registered, cannot appear in public because of observance of a religious commitment, are un unable to vote in person by reason of a physical disability, or are unable to appear at the polls at any time during polling hours because an employment obligation requires you to remain physically at work or to be in transit to or from work from the time the polls open until after the polls close, period. <laughs> okay, any other questions from either the council or the board? Is there any additional information anyone from the school or the town would like to offer? Len, anything? I'll give you one correction. There's a typo on the list that I sent you. You mean we it's not 123,000? We don't have 123,000. <laughs> There's an extra six in there. If you just cross off that six. I looked at it at night and went, oh, I don't think so. I think we all saw that because that's not even the population yep. of the town. Um, one quick question from me. Uh, you gave a, upon what basis are you going to distribute the assignments? I think Dan had mentioned 555, but a problem. No, You'll it's not going to be 555. Five. More. We're going to be basing it on the capacity of the various all-purpose rooms that we're going to be using. So it won't be an equal distribution. And also, speaking to that, you mentioned the fact that we would be using St. John Newman's. And I'm going to suggest that that might not necessarily be true. Well, we call them, that's why. Yes, but we have also talked to Merrimack Valley Baptist Church. Correct. They have agreed and, to be perfectly honest, are thrilled that we would like to use their facility for the major for the for the November election, and we've also talked about the, the presidential primary. They've said they're willing to cancel school. They have a phenomenal facility there, good entrance, good ADA access, uh, <coughs> large size air conditioning, um, and are happy to do it. Plenty of parking, and so our suggestion <coughs> is that we use Merrimack Valley Baptist for the November and the presidential primary, and we use St. John's for the other smaller elections. They're both very close. Um, it's similar to using the, up, the uh, upper elementary or the high school. You're on the same campus. Right. You can easily put a sign there saying, nope, you're not voting here today, you're voting down the street. Um, that way you keep, there's no way you're gonna put four or 5,000 people at St. John Newman's. It just is not gonna happen. You're talking maybe 3,000 max. Um, so to do, the smaller elections at St. John Newman's, and they have said, yes, they're willing to allow us to come back again. Um, I would suggest you you plan on that as your alternative. Okay, so that is a decision the town council will have to make. Correct. Not from this meeting, but, and that's totally separate from the Correct. schools, so we can do that independently. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions or any comments, Diane? No, um, I just want to thank everyone for, all of the input and all of the hard work, I echo everybody else's <laughs> comments that this has been um, a good learning experience. It's been a good compromise. I think we've pretty much looked at everything. Lynn and I tweak after every election, so I echo the comments about there is going to be traffic because no matter what, um, heavy elections, you're going to have people waiting. And we sit down, we after every election, look at what went good, what was bad, um, ways to improve, so it's always a work in process. We, we tweak it on the fly frequently. Yeah. Yeah. If we find something that, that will make it work better as we're going, we do that. Excellent. Okay, well I think that settles anything, Shannon? I think so. What I'll do is I'll commit to uh, before I go to bed the night of the 20th, you will have an email from me ah, and thank that you. will tell you what uh, the discussion and the vote were. And I'll forward it to the town. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the second topic is other. That was added, but I think the school board already knows about it as well because I gave them a heads up. In the past, we've had discussions about the tennis courts and the town council's decision not to replace them, and everyone can look at the town minutes and 
it, it's just too expensive. It was should never have been built there. Anyway, we've been waiting for a letter from the State of New Hampshire Department of Resources and Economic Development, Divisions of Park and Recreation, to have um, those tennis courts declared obsolete. There has to be an official letter received, which was we have received since, declaring it obsolete, so that now we can officially tell the school board, here it is, what we need to hear from you is, now it cannot be used by you until after July 30th, 2018. However, we can improve it. We need to hear from you officially. Do you want us to take down the fence? Do you want us to take the paving out, put grass in? You tell us what you would like us to do. Okay. Um, absolutely. And to that end, um, a few meetings ago that we had a uh, charge given to our planning and building committee. And one of the um, one of the objectives was to talk about having an engineering study on that site so we can look at long-term planning, what's appropriate, what, what can the facilities handle, what should they handle, what needs does the district have, and what would that facility do for it. So our intent is to have um, an engineer go out to the site um, in the short term so that we can, his knowledge can be shared with the planning and building committee. Okay. And with that, we can um, now plan for their long-term the long-term goal, give them the charge. They have a deadline to work on for us so that when we do come back to you, we come back to you with a, uh, a well-reasoned and thought-out expectation of what we want the property to do long-term. Mm -hmm. So we will need the engineering study um, that we will be doing uh, to make that happen. So with that, we can give you a better answer once that's completed. Do we need to deliberate on that? I. Uh, <laughs> I think that um, there should be something done in the interim. So in, just in my opinion, not that I'm a well, we're looking opinion, for but, guidance. Um, I think that rather than have the dilapidated tennis courts be there for two years, um, we're just asking you, do you want us to take them down and leave it in a, in its, um, in a basically a, um, grassy site with a bench on it until such time as you want to do something or do you want to just leave them up in a dilapidated condition but that's not what I meant I'm talking oh. about the engineering study in the short term so I think doing they fast. need to deliberate that and let us know officially what they want but they'd like to do an engineering study and I'm wondering do we need to have that as an agenda item or for, for them to do an engineering study what's your opinion I, I don't know what you're asking. They're requesting to be able to have an engineering study done on the area. Their building committee wants to be able to look in the future use. But what would you like the council to decide? Well, that's what I'm asking. Do, Does it have to be um, to, the, to if, allow if them to do it? we have to give it? authorization is what she's do asking. We allow How do we give it? authorization? Because we're the landlords, you're the tenant technically, no. but is there any? That's I, what I'm I can't asking. imagine that you would. Because okay. I think, in general, I think it's very clear that the council would like to do something to. Right. Um, but the study itself, do we have to make a decision and we can just say, you can go ahead and do it? All right, now you're talking about paying for it. We're paying for it. Oh, no. you're paying for it. Yeah, okay. we, want, it's our, oh, we want to see what okay. we're going to do with the property long term. Okay. So we've asked no, the building committee, they're asking no, for a study. Don't. Unless there's some objection from the council as to. Um, you know that taking place I can't imagine why there would be um, I don't think there there needs to be anything any issues with the com council okay go for it then excellent so with that we'll have information with the planning and building committee and then we can get back to you I Mike? think Mike Thompson may have had a question or a comment as well um, I haven't been by there recently are the tennis courts in use still no they're no. closed off period okay. Since thank before you I've been on the board just want to make sure thank you um, so basically with the engineering study we'll know what the property can do with that, we'll go to the Planning and Building Committee. We're not asking for you at the you know, 23rd month to come up with a, a beautification plan. Um, but we also don't want to do something like maybe take out the footings of the electrical poles without knowing what you know, the appropriate usage is. Used. Right, so that's why we just don't want to be hasty. We don't like the look of it either, but we also want to make sure we're doing, we have, we have a plan in place to do it. The engineering study is step one of a, of a plan, and with that, we'll, we'll get back to you, but we definitely want it looking Great. different. Okay by next year. <laughs> Good, thanks. <laughs> Great. Okay. Is there anything else anyone else wants to bring up that's not on the agenda? Seeing nothing. Comments from the press. Here's your opportunity. Nothing. Comments from the public. 
comments from the council as a member of the council I'll just finish off by saying thank you to the school board for working with us and it's sort of a nice thing to reflect to the community isn't it mm -hmm. that we have a community problem and we've come to a community resolution okay comments from the school board well I will uh, I'll actually refer to Davis first do you mind Thank no. you. Um, I just want to echo the, the your sentiment, um, Nancy, that um, I think it's great that the two boards were able to come together. This is something that I've been hoping for for several, several years, and I'm glad to see that um, not only staff were able to come together and address the problem and come back to us with solutions, but I, as I said before, I feel very comfortable with this, and I'm hoping that this is the genesis of very productive joint interactions between these two boards um, in the future thank you Shannon I'd have to say uh, ditto to that I think there's a lot that we have in common I think there's a lot we can accomplish together so I look forward to more collaboration over the next year and, and see what more we can do together so excellent so thank you for inviting us again and uh, we really we appreciate the time we had tonight terrific it's a kumbaya night isn't it okay we do. I would like a, a motion, motion to adjourn, to adjourn. Bill Boyd second by Mr. Powell Thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Good night.